Well, in the midst of this unofficial election campaign, a lot of partisan commentary, hot air, people are pushing various barrows. A couple of, uh, of political issues and a couple of policy issues that have been ignored. We've seen the way, for instance, that the government and the opposition have been racing to reaffirm each other's policies in a couple of key areas, principally you see asylum seekers as the area where now the government has adopted the Pacific solution, almost holus bolus and gone even further. But what's been perhaps not commented on enough is that two of the, the big items and the big items that are seen as positives for the Labor Party are now being adopted almost wholly by the coalition. We knew uh, some weeks ago that the National Broadband Network would continue to be rolled out by the coalition in a different form. It won't be going uh, right into your home, the fibre. There'll be fibre to the node on the street corner, but schools and businesses will get the fibre going right into the home. And there is an expectation that eventually that fibre will be rolled out to everyone, whether they'll have to pay for it's another thing. But this is the way of the future and it's something that Australia needs. And that's been acknowledged by what is potentially the new government and Malcolm Turnbull, the Communications Minister. Perhaps the most significant thing, though, when we have a look at this election, where partisan politicking has stood in the way of a sensible debate on the education issue, the Gonski reforms, so-called, the changes to education funding, which will benefit most schools across Australia and which are bipartisan uh, in terms of their support in New South Wales, where the New South Wales Liberal government has embraced the funding changes and Everyone in the education sector can see these are going to be a huge boon to schools, but because it was something being pushed by the Labor Party, Christopher Pine has been running around the country saying he's opposing it, he'll stop it, he won't run it, as the government has tried to get other states to sign up. Now, in New South Wales, from day one, they supported this, and Adrian Piccoli and Barry O'Farrell have supported this, but because of Christopher Pine's attitude and the possibility of a change of government, indeed a, a probability of a change of government, these much needed funding reforms which will unquestionably benefit schools in New South Wales, they were in jeopardy. Now Tony Abbott on Friday came out and said that he and Kevin Rudd are on the same page on this. So he's embraced these reforms and says that whatever's promised by the Labor Party will be implemented over the next four years. It means for instance that Victoria can now sign up and even the states that have been holding out for largely political reasons can sign up to these education reforms. There's no doubt the thing that's been holding back the signing of this by some of the states has been raw partisan politics. You've only got to look at New South Wales, listen to the arguments of O'Farrell and Piccoli, the Education Minister, who have embraced this and said this is the way forward to know that what Tony Abbott's now done is he's recognised that this is the way forward. He's also immediately undercut a very potent line that Kevin Rudd could have used, that if you vote for Tony Abbott, you lose these huge benefits for schools. Now those benefits will be in place. There's nothing more important than the education of our kids. So in what he's a very, very partisan, very tight electoral contest, a lot of rubbish tossed around. This is one issue where they've jumped into bed together and that's for the benefit of all of us, but particularly for the future generations.